Hi, it's Travis Ayers or Mark Summers. That was my radio name when I was a top 40 DJ in markets like uh, New Orleans and New York City for 35 years. And I'm here to tell you another radio story. Now, we did our first uh, YouTube video in Brooklyn Heights a couple of weeks ago. If you saw that, you noticed that in the background was the beautiful Manhattan skyline. That was an appropriate place to tell the story of the day the music died at WABC Radio in New York City 40 years ago, and that's what we did. But now, as you can tell, we are not in New York City anymore. We're back in the beautiful Ozarks of Arkansas. And it's a beautiful day here. Time for another radio story. And we're bringing you this one because I just saw the new movie, Elvis, with Austin Butler. And let me tell you, this kid does a wonderful job of portraying Elvis Presley. If you like Elvis, like Elvis's music, I would urge you to go see it. And that's my movie review. That's all uh, I'll tell you about that. You can make up your own mind. But let me tell you my uh, Elvis story. Let's go back to 1955, Shreveport, Louisiana, the home of the Louisiana Hayride, which was kind of the Grand Ole Opry of the Deep South. And Elvis was appearing there in 1955. Wasn't his first appearance that I saw, um, but he was there, I believe, late in 1954. He may have done his first appearance, and then he comes back in 1955 to do some more shows at the Louisiana Hayride. And my parents and my oldest brother and I, I'm about eight years old at the time, uh, we're there for the show, and it was quite a show, I'll tell you. Elvis comes out in a red suit, and he's shaking and shimmying and singing, but I really can't make a judgment on Elvis's voice because the teenage girls are screaming so loud that nobody can hardly hear anything. But what a spectacular show, and that was my first exposure to Elvis Presley. Now, jump ahead a couple of decades to 1977, I'm in New Orleans, and I'm uh, the midday disc jockey for WNOE Radio, WNOE AM, legendary top 40 radio station in New Orleans. I'm also the station's music director. And as music director, I obviously have a lot of say on what goes on to the, the WNOE playlist at the time. RCA comes out with Elvis's Moody Blue album, and on that album I hear a song that catches my attention, and that song is a rocker called way down remember elvis singing way down it's a good rocker and i thought it'd sound great on our radio station so i went to our program director and i suggested that we add it to our playlist and he said mark no we're not going to add elvis because nobody cares about elvis anymore he's not hip he's not cool anymore and we're going for a young audience but i didn't take no for an answer I started doing some research on the sales of records, and during that past four or five years when Elvis really hadn't had much radio airplay, I found out that he was still selling tens of millions of records. So with that information, I went back to my program director, presented to the, uh, the information to him, and he relented, and we added way down to our playlist. Weeks go by now, and we're starting to get requests for the song, which is always a good sign that a song's going to become a hit. Weeks go by and then a big event happens uh, for my family. We're at the hospital in New Orleans and it is the birth of my daughter, my first daughter, Alyssa Ayers. So I'm in the room with my wife after my wife uh, comes into the recovery room. I'm there and they bring baby Alyssa in and it's my first time to meet her and any father knows what a feeling that is. So we have time to visit with the baby and take pictures, and then they take the baby back to wherever they keep all the other babies. As, as soon as um, they take the baby away, the phone rings, and it's the administration office of the hospital, and they're saying, hey, you need to come down and pay your bill. See, that's the way things worked back then. Insurance didn't cover having babies. The parents had to save up money to have a baby. So I head down to the administration office to pay the bill for baby Alyssa being born. And when I get to the office, I notice that a lot of the women seem very sad, and some of them are even crying. And I ask, what's wrong? And one of them told me, you haven't heard? Elvis Presley died. I couldn't believe it. I ran out to my car, turned on the radio, and there on WNOE, they were playing Elvis. First thing I heard, and I knew it was true. The king of rock and roll had passed away. That's right, my daughter was born on the day that Elvis died, August 16th, 1977. Now, 
when I'm thinking back on this, one of the things that's kind of a fun feeling is that when Elvis left the building, he had a hit record on the radio. Because way down, not only was a hit in New Orleans, it went on to become a hit all across the country. It ended up being number 25 on the Billboard National Top 100 charts. So that's my Elvis story. Oh yeah, Alyssa Ayers. How did she end up? Well, if you were in New Orleans and went to Mardi Gras in New Orleans, uh, from the years of about 2010 to around 2016-17, and you uh, experienced some of the Mardi Gras parades, you saw the artwork of Alyssa Ayers because she was a brilliant painter and is a brilliant painter, but uh, at that time she was working as a Mardi Gras artist and did the, the beautiful props that paraded on the floats during Mardi Gras season. So that's my radio story for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And this is Mark Summers, really Travis Ayers. Catch you next time.